Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to a new episode of our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We are not going to talk about what happens when, we're gonna talk about what to do when your orchid falls out of its pot. Why would an orchid fall out of its pot? Well, I'll tell you. There are multiple ways and instances in which your orchid can simply fly out of its pot. And I'm gonna tell you what to do about it because you should actually do something as fast as possible. And the main character today is this beautiful Cattleya type orchid that I've been wanting for a long time. It is the Vanagar Apple Blossom. One of you lovely people sent it to me. I don't deserve you guys. I'm so excited about it, but it arrived out of its pot. And this inspired me to make this video because I'm sure some of you, if you're beginners, don't know something about orchid roots. So before we start the subject, today's video together with this entire series is of course sponsored by repotme.com who offers you everything you could possibly need to properly take care of your orchids. From potting mixes to pots, which we will be using one today, to fertilizers and accessories and everything in between. And not only for orchids, but also for other houseplants as well, such as cacti and succulents. So I'll link you to their website down below in the description and in the pinned comment. Feel free to check them out at any time. I'll also share with you the products that I enjoy using the most. And today we will be using, as I was saying, one of their slotted pots. And with that said, let us begin. Now this orchid is already potted up and this is because I received it a couple of days ago and I had to act then and there. And I'll explain to you why then. I already filmed that. But first let's start with how can an orchid just fall out of its pot? Well, as some of my viewers will for sure mention in the comments, it happens more often than you think. First off, do you have pets, especially of the feline kind? Well, as I understand, cats sometimes can walk in between the pots and sometimes have a tendency to just slap pots and plants and... I'm not a cat owner, but I've seen enough videos and I've heard enough about it to know that cats sometimes bump things over just for fun. That can happen. You might also have pets of the burden kind. As you know, I have my birds which are in the aviary now. They like to try and land on flower spikes or long leaves. Hence, the orchid ends up on the floor out of its pot. Another sure way to get an orchid out of its pot is by snagging it with your clothes, especially those beautiful phalaenopsis that have long and archy flower spikes. I should show you one of those, right? There she is, my pride and joy. Her flower spikes are absolutely gorgeous, but I think you can see that if I'm not careful, and if I don't position this orchid in a secure place, I can definitely brush against these flower spikes, they can get snagged in my clothes, and the orchid would be on the floor. Also, because this orchid is top heavy, I have it in a very heavy pot. Otherwise, it would end up on the floor as the flower spikes grow. And we talked about this, I think, in this series. What happens when you don't stake your flower spikes? Well, one of the things that can happen is your orchid is out of its pot. Also, if you have it next to a window and you have a curtain or something and then there's a gust of wind for whatever reason or a draft, your curtain can again get trapped in the flower spike and then as the wind moves the curtain around, it can bump over your orchid. Causes are so, so many. I'm sure I can come up with a few more causes that I've experienced along the years. It's very frustrating, but the cause that we will take care of today is that of some really tough transport. Sometimes, no matter how much us or nurseries pack our orchids as stable as possible, transport can be quite rough and bumpy. Have you ever seen those reels in which parcels are kind of thrown around? Yeah, sometimes that can happen. Sometimes they can just fall, not necessarily be thrown around. Things happen during transport and sometimes our boxes are either positioned upside down, either they're bent, and sometimes our orchids are simply jiggled inside so much so that they completely come out of their pot. And especially if you have an orchid potted only in bark, which is a great medium, but if it's chunky, it doesn't really stabilize the orchid in the pot, then you can have all the bark in one corner of the box and the orchid in the other corner. This is what happened to this orchid. Something happened during transport and this orchid was not in its pot anymore, even though the person who sent it to me packed it very, very well. It was even packed in its own um, wrapping paper. It still got out of its pot. 
Now, it is very important when you have such a situation to act as soon as possible. So I'm going to refer you to past Danny, which reported the sore kid for her, which is actually me, it's weird. Yeah, I'm gonna explain to you as I report the sore kid, why it's important to act as fast as possible if you have an orchid out of its pot. All right, so here is what we are dealing with. A cat Leia type orchid which arrived something like this, completely out of its pot. Now, the medium was pretty much everywhere. Even if I tried to put it back, it wouldn't have been exactly like it was before. It wouldn't have been um, stable in any way. It was also bark and it didn't look to be very fresh anyway. So, immediately as I saw this orchid, I put some more water. You can see there's quite a bit accumulating. That's okay, I did that one hour ago. But my main concern was to maintain these roots humid. The problem with orchids falling out of their pot is that their root system suddenly will experience a much, much drier environment. And typically speaking, with orchids, that is a no-no. Their roots cannot adapt suddenly to these types of swings in the moisture around their roots. Yes, they are adaptable, generally speaking, to more droughty conditions, but these conditions usually happen gradually. The roots that grow adapt as they grow to the surrounding environment. The roots that are already grown have a much harder time adapting to a different type of environment. And when I say environment, I don't mean necessarily the type of material we're using, but the humidity or lack thereof that it generates. So all of a sudden our orchid is not placed like it used to be, so the medium does not offer the same amount of humidity. What happens, especially with cattleyas, but not only with finer rooted orchids as well, like oncidiums, dendrobiums, less with phalaenopsis, I will agree, less with vandas, but generally what happens if the roots are exposed to too much air all of a sudden is that those roots will desiccate very, very fast. And when you will rewater the orchid, pretty much you will speed up the breaking down or decomposition process. And in no time, you're gonna find yourself in a root rot situation and you're gonna wonder what happened, what did you do wrong? You pretty much didn't do anything wrong, but to prevent that instance, we need to address the roots right away. So what can you do? Right then and there, you can repot the orchid back, gather all the bits and pieces of medium. If it's fresh, if it's not fresh, you can use a different type of medium. You can just repot the entire orchid if the medium is old. It is your choice, but get that orchid into medium. If you don't have medium at hand, if you think you're gonna be a few hours late, do what I did, put the orchid back in the pot, whatever medium you still have left, as much as possible. I placed mine like this and just put water in there, soak the roots, and maybe leave it in a little bit of water while you go to the shop and get yourself some bark or whatever medium you prefer. It is really, really important that you do that with these orchids, trust me. And when you're home, do a repot as soon as possible, even at night, it's fine. If you cannot do it right away, put water here, keep the roots wet, not submerged in water, but exposed to a little bit of water so they can pull that water and not desiccate. It is so important to not let them desiccate and they desiccate really fast. Now, what we are going to do today is completely repot this orchid because I wanna put it in my own type of medium. So I kept it moist for the past half an hour to an hour and now it is time to remove all of this old medium which looks pretty old to be honest. So I will go ahead and remove this sphagnum moss plug which I do believe is quite old. By the way my orchid is a pretty young orchid, not a seedling, I wouldn't necessarily call it a seedling but it is pretty young. So I'll go ahead and remove as much of this medium as possible and also cut away any dead root if I see any. Pretty much go about it like a normal repot. <laughs> Excuse my birds. All right, here we are. I rinsed the roots of my orchid. Now what I wanna do is spray some hydrogen peroxide, 3% only on the root system. I do this because many of the times I do find snails in brand new orchids and snails. If left unattended, the bush snails, they can definitely destroy the brand new root tips. 
I've lost quite a few orchids to bush snails. I'm not taking any chances. For the past 10 years or so, the past decade, I've been using hydrogen peroxide 3% that you can find in the pharmacies, sprayed on the root system whenever I repot a new orchid, and I have never had bush snail issues ever again after dealing with them for a year. It was horrible. You don't need to rinse this off. You can put it in a spray bottle like I did for ease of use. If you've ever had issues with bush snails and no pellets worked, because trust me, I tried pellets as well, then hydrogen peroxide 3% is the way to go. Right, so I'm gonna be using a combination of bark and sphagnum moss. This is what goes well for epiphytic orchids generally in my area. I can also get away with full sphagnum moss. However, I'm moving house soon and I might actually have a very different environment in that house. It's quite different. So I'm just gonna go with a safe bit. Just to see how my roots grow there, I am using a three inch repot me pot, which is one of the greatest pots of life. It is UV protected. I showed you in a video what happens to pots exposed to sunlight or reflections of sunlight not pretty they disintegrate this is not doing that so i'm using one of these pots and i'm putting sphagnum moss at the bottom just to absorb water that maybe falls in the tray yes i'm a little extra <laughs> you can go ahead and pre-mix everything in a separate bowl or purchase an already made mix it's fine i'm i'm extra like that i like to fully customize my pots then i will put some bark around and then again some sphagnum moss. I'm pretty much alternating the medium here to create an evenly moist environment. That is what I want to obtain. This way of arranging my mix also works well with slotted pots because it further prevents layering. What I mean by layering is the uneven moisture distribution in the pot. Sometimes if you don't have very water absorbing materials in your pot and you don't even have ventilation slits, you will notice that most of the moisture will be at the bottom and the top will be very dry. Well, if I arrange my potting mix like this, I don't seem to have that issue. I'm also going to be using some slow release fertilizer. Why not? Catleas do really enjoy some slow release fertilizer. Just a few beads. I'm using Osmocote. I don't have the MSU, I cannot import it in the EU just yet, but Osmocode is a good option as well. And I'm going to finish off with a layer of bark. Yes, I'm extremely extra, but in my environment, the wet sphagnum moss, if exposed to light, it does grow cyanobacteria. And that is not nice. It stinks, it produces kind of toxic byproducts that affects root tips and little stems. So I like to prevent cyanobacteria by placing a non-water retentive material that can shade the first layer of sphagnum moss. And then everything will go into a decorative pot to shade the sides of my pot. I'm very curious to see if in my new house I will have cyanobacteria issues. I suspect I will, <laughs> but um, yeah, I am going to experiment. Right, so my orchid is now potted. It will probably sit in this decorative pot, but first and foremost, I need to water it. I need to maintain the roots again moist because this medium was dry. I used it dry. So I'm gonna go run water through this pot thoroughly at the sink and I'll come back with the outro. And here we are today, a few days later, I can see through the pot barely a root. I can see it's still moist and it's not brown or anything. So I think we managed to intervene in time so that the roots did not desiccate or suffer due to the lower humidity all of a sudden. So I do believe everything will be just dandy with this orchid. If you don't know how this orchid looks like, I'll put a picture. I had it in the past. Not sure if this one will be identical to that one. That one was a pinker variety, but the Vanagara apple blossom is one of the most gorgeous orchids you can have. You can sometimes find it in flower shops. It is an older hybrid. Orchid nurseries should have it and do not be afraid of it. If you're a beginner, it is just as easy to care for as any other cat leia. And if you're not very acquainted with cat leas yet, check the description. I always have tutorials, easy for beginner tutorials, linked in my description and you will definitely find a care tutorial for cat leas. Right, so this has been it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your horror stories about orchids falling out of their pots because I know it's so frustrating, so frustrating and in worst case scenarios you can even break flower spikes and leaves. That's 
very bad but i would say roots are worse than flower spikes flower spikes will always grow again roots though especially if it's the wrong time to lose roots no not a good scenario so i know it's frustrating but in the end if it all ended up okay we can laugh a little about it i like to laugh about all of these things so yeah let us know in the comments your experiences and thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this topic and if you have other suggestions for topics in this series let me know in a comment thank you repod me for sponsoring yet another episode and with that said i hope you'll have a great day and i'll see you next time bye